This e-lecture is part of Pearson's professional development series for first-year writing instructors. My name is Tom Dow, and I am an English faculty member and also the department chair of English, well, it's Communications, Literature, and Foreign Languages at Moraine Valley College in Palos Hills, Illinois. And today I'm going to talk about uh, some tips and hopefully help some folks uh, avoid some anxiety in doing course level assessment uh, in a large department um, at a large school. Um, with many, many players. So I, I came up with kind of a catchy title uh, for this, uh, Patience Really is a Virtue, or it is possible to develop and implement course level assessment and composition with 20 of your closest friends, um, that that is in fact possible. Um, originally when my, uh, this is back when assessment was kind of new at our college and I was coming on as a new chairperson, um, somebody had a great idea that if they were gonna experiment with assessment at our college, that they should, of course, start with the calm people because, you know, don't the English people already know how to do all of that stuff? Um, so we started kind of an, I guess I would call it an immature way uh, of doing assessment where we, of course, we assess students all the time, but we never thought about doing it um, at this large of a scale. Um, for example, with uh, 90 sections with 32 students in each one in a given semester, um, we never thought about doing it at the course level. So our first conversations had to do with how do you actually do that? How, how do you practically uh, gather data from that many students um, without killing ourselves? Um, trying to, for example, read thousands of papers. How, how would we do that? Um, so we came up with an objective exam uh, to test a certain number of uh, different learning outcomes um, to see if we could gather some data that way um, regarding things that you don't really have to have an essay um, to determine whether or not students um, can, can recognize and then draft their own thesis statements, whether or not students could create transitions, whether they could know whether a paragraph is well organized. You didn't really have to have an entire essay to do that. Or to see, for example, if they uh, understood the conventions of MLA documentation, if they could do that. So we created this multiple choice exam, um, administered it, and this is starting back in the spring of 2003. Um, administered the exam, we, we thought it was kind of a there was kind of a disconnect between uh, composition courses and a multiple choice exam. Uh, that seemed like a bit of a disconnect, but we were new to assessment and that seemed like something we could wrap our own heads around, so we gave that a whirl. Um, and that was really an interesting experience for us because it taught us um, basically that we didn't know a whole lot about assessment, but even not knowing a lot about it, that we could do it, um, that we could learn some interesting things about what our students were learning. Uh, and surprisingly, we learned that they had some trouble with uh, paragraphs, that that was a skill that they were struggling with. We expected the MLA, we accepted the cita we expected citation issues, um, but the thing that surprised us most was the paragraph uh, development and focus. So having done it for two or three semesters and gathering data from thousands of students uh, took the exam over that time, and we were able to then redesigned the way that we were teaching the courses so that we were focusing on those skills. We did then run the exam again. We did find um, that there was improvement. Um, and so we felt fairly like we were getting, getting better at assessment at the course level. Um, and then we decided to move on to our Composition two course, um, which at the time and currently it's, it still is a writing about literature course started thinking we would do something more sophisticated with assessment in that course and actually look at student writing samples. So we looked at, started putting together uh, this midterm writing prompt that students would all be writing to the same prompt. Uh, they would all be, we'd be doing random sampling, then we would review them. We would assess whether or not they had hit the targeted uh, outcomes. Um, but a funny thing happened along the way where we had an unplanned detour at that point um, because we realized that we really needed to reevaluate and revise uh, our grading standards, the way that we evaluated student papers. Um, because there, again, there was this disconnect between the assignment, the prompt we had given them, the learning outcomes, and then the way that we actually, the department was grading. So we took a detour uh, from our assessment plan and revised our grading standards over, I believe that took us a year to get those revised um, into something that was much more consistent with our philosophy behind teaching composition. Then we went back to doing some more work with that same data set. We collected another data set 
Um, but then as we were talking about the grading standards, we also realized at that point that we had never really talked about how we graded um, and whether or not a student would find consistent grading uh, among the different sections. So then we had a second unplanned detour. We still hadn't gotten back to those exams that we were supposed to grade. Um, and we decided that we needed to do some grade calibration, um, which prior to this, I had never thought about that. But at an institution of our size um, and with 16, 18 full-time faculty members, perhaps 50 part-time faculty members in the department, we really needed to take some time and just talk about the way that we apply those grading standards. You know, if we, if we have an, an essay that we, the majority of us agree is an A and someone else gave it a C, well, why was that? And talk through that process and come to some consistency across the grading. So that was our second unplanned detour all along this route to trying to get this assessment data. Um, and, and as we move back toward uh, trying to get back at that data set, we realized that every time we tried to assess COM 102, which was our second part of the writing sequence, every time we tried to look at our courses as a program, that we were constantly running into a roadblock, which was that our courses really were not very well aligned, uh, that the learning outcomes from our Comp 1, which is college level writing and research writing, um, didn't align very well with our Comp 2 writing about literature outcomes. And we were getting very frustrated by the fact that this was supposed to be a sequence, but that they were very much not in alignment. So we decided in the spring of 2008 uh, to, we, and this was unanimously, to go back to the drawing table from scratch, revise the two courses. Um, so in, in some ways, while we never finished that project um, in terms of looking at those midterm writing samples, the random samples from the English, uh, the, the COM 102 course, um, I think something much more important happened as a result of the conversations in offices and in classrooms and in hallways and department meetings about assessment because what our experience with assessment led us to was the realization that we needed to revise our courses. Um, so since the spring of 08, we've been working on revising the learning outcomes. We actually just started back from scratch and said if the courses didn't exist, what would we want students to learn over a year in composition? And we came up with some really great learning outcomes. We've submitted all of our materials to the state for review. We're currently putting together a first year writing, uh, writing program handbook that will be a great resource for, uh, again, a large number of adjunct faculty, as well as when we hire new full-time folks. Um, and the courses will be going online. Our, our new COM 101 and COM 102 will be going online uh, the fall of 2009, so this coming fall. Um, and the process, that I was just walking you through. Um, again, we started with one goal, which just was to assess our composition courses. But again, I think the big takeaway for me is that we were willing, um, as a large group, and a large group of diverse faculty members, to step back from the goal and say, all right, well, what we're finding is that we have some roadblocks here, we have some obstacles. Uh, that are really getting in the way of us being effective, of us gathering effective data about student learning, and, and therefore ultimately they're getting in the way of what we believe as professionals, as experts, that our students should be learning. And we were very willing to uh, continue along this path, but with many unexpected directions. We were willing to take a lot of detours, we were willing to keep circling back around um, and really get at the heart of what the issue was and always always with with student learning in mind and I think that was to me that's what I was most proud of that we weren't so focused on achieving the original goal that we were unwilling or perhaps even just afraid of following it down an unexpected path so really that's my my greatest advice um, that I would give to my fellow chair people, to writing program administrators, to writing directors, um, is to keep the process moving, even if it moves to places that you didn't expect it to go to. Um, because for us, that was really the, 
the large benefit for us in this process was we learned a great deal about assessment, but what we learned more importantly was that our courses needed to be changed. And because we were willing to say, okay, that's not what we started doing, but that's really the important job at hand. Um, along the path, we were calling it the big elephant in the corner of the room that nobody wanted to address, but we finally did address it. Um, and I know uh, that ultimately that our students are gonna be much better off uh, having had that experience. And I know that one other thing that I wanted, did want to mention is that we, depending on the resources um, of an individual institution, we did start this working with an, a director of assessment. Um, but really, most, I'd say 90% of this work has been done by the faculty in the department. Um, in fact, our director of assessment was promoted to dean about a year into this. So this was starting in 2003, and we're at 2009 right now. So for the first year, we had some guidance. Um, but after that, we really were on our own, and, and we were the ones who kind of had those aha moments of, I think we need to go somewhere else. And we were the ones who then sat down with the administration and said, I realize this was our department goal, but it's not going where it needs to go. We need to change it, go somewhere else, table that other idea you know, for the future. And we haven't then had assistance from a, an assessment director or other, really other campus resources of that nature for the vast majority of this. Um, so even though we're, my institution is a large college, um, I think this could be done uh, really anywhere because the resources, we, we found the best resources were really within our department. Um, we're hoping that it, as we continue forward into the future, we have a new assessment director who was hired about two weeks ago. Um, we're hoping that he will be able to help us then as we move forward. Um, but again, the major project here, which was revising um, in a meaningful way what are at our college among the largest courses that we have in terms of the numbers of students who successfully complete them um, really was faculty driven and for the most part it was completed by faculty. For additional e-lectures, visit Pearson's Professional Development site for first-year writing instructors at www.pearsonhighered.com slash comppro.